Welcome to the dugout. I'm your host, Mike Stenhouse, on this Wuhan Wednesday. Andy Boston will not be with us today, but we do have for you Deanna Klein. She is a United States Air Force veteran, and she's a nurse who cared and treated for those patients, many patients who suffered harmful effects from the COVID vaccine. She's written a book about it, and she's going to be our guest today. All right, I want to now uh, bring into the show our our Wuhan Wednesday uh, guest, and uh, let's see if uh, if the audio and video is connected properly. And this is uh, we had mentioned her earlier, uh, Deanna Klein. Uh, she is a uh, former U.S. Air Force veteran. She's a nurse. Uh, she treated many, many um, patients who suffered from the vaccine. I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Deanna. Good to meet you. Oh, and you're even wearing a cap for me, huh? I am. It's uh, it's an old, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Not too well, but tell um, us what it says. It, <laughs> it's the old Tampa Bay Devil Rays hat. Ah, yes. very good. Very yeah. good. Well, welcome to In the Dugout. Thank you. I don't it. know if you know, I, I know we had you in the background, but but our Wednesday show we now call Wuhan Wednesdays, and we and we devote that to talking about COVID-related stuff, and uh, that's why you fit right in. Our normal co-host, uh, Dr. Andrew Boston, can't be with us today, but uh, Deanna, it leads right into your book. Uh, Dr. Boston, in this show, I'm pretty certain we're among the first in the whole country to start talking about the, the, the research data that showed that these vaccines might not be as safe and or effective as possible. Dr. Boston was among the first to talk about the potential pericarditis, myocarditis, but you've written a whole book on the topic. So first, before we get into that, tell us a little about you. You're, you're a former United States Air Force veteran or currently yes. a veteran yeah yeah <laughs> well i went into the air force right out of high school when i was 18 just was in for four years but i was a medic like a corpsman in the navy uh used the gi bill to go to college became a nurse i've been a registered nurse for uh 30 years uh, most of my background is from cardiac critical care uh but in the past oh. six uh, but in the past six uh almost six years i've been a primary care nurse practitioner uh, so seeing patients in the family practice office, uh, you know, uh, 16 to 22 patients a day. Where are you? Where are you looking? I'm in Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach. Oh, we were just in Williamsburg, not too far from you, uh, just uh, just 10 days ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, so your, your, your cardiology area. So let's get right into it. Uh, Dr. Boston. Oh, it's it's got to be two and a half for two and a half years. I've been talking about, boy, you know, I'm seeing some data that makes it look like young people, especially anyone under 30 are having myocarditis, periocarditis. So we just looked at the data. You Did you actually see patients with these conditions? Absolutely. <laughs> I have a couple of chapters in my book uh, on the cardiac effects and, and the uh, blood clotting effects. Um, and so I wrote the book to uh, honor the fallen and injured, uh, to tell the truth, and um, to stop, hopefully work towards stop the stopping the mocking and canceling of so many that are suffering in silence. They're not acknowledged. Um, they're still being canceled off of uh, social media platforms, um, and they need help. So um, I was convicted. I just had to write write about them. I uh, wasn't sure at first if it was just for me to get it off my chest, but um, but I just want uh, I want them to be well taken care of <laughs> at this point. Well, let's take a look at your book. Here's the here's the um, here's the title of it. It's called uh, Vaccine Injuries, Lies and Deaths, the Alarming Facts about the COVID vaccine and helpful resources for healing. We'll get into the resources for healing at the end. Um, so I don't know where you want to start. Uh, tell, tell, let's, let's, let's take them in our first, and this is on Amazon. I assume anybody can look this up yes. and buy your book. Uh, tell us about some of the injuries you saw first. Yeah. So right away in February of 2021, um, a lot of our uh, folks are elder patients and many of them went to the convention center, got their first shot in January. 
January, their second shot in February. Um, but right away in February, we began to see uh, patients uh, suffering. Um, I've had I had several with a clot oh, with, right away after they were first came out. Yes, I mean Pfizer's own ninety day data, and within ninety days, Pfizer's own data had twelve hundred and twenty three deaths, over forty two thousand adverse reports uh, from people, including over five one hundred and fifty thousand reactions, meaning that over forty thousand people had more than one reaction as well. So they Pfizer, that's Pfizer's own data. The EUA. Tell data. me about some of the more severe cases you personally saw. Severe cases. So very sad case. A gentleman in his 50s, uh, living life. Um, he had an aortic valve, um, which some folks have for 20 years before it needs surgery, an aortic valve that was a little bit insufficient. But again, people can live with that for many years until they get elderly and need it replaced. Uh, but he, um, nine days after his first shot, he had uh, a heart attack, uh, but he was misdiagnosed. Um, there was a clot in his heart. They missed the clot in his heart. He was discharged from the hospital after three days and was told that clot he in his had heart? Yes. And he was told that he had emphysema flare up, which he did not have a diagnosis of emphysema prior. Anyways, um, a few days after that, he returned to the hospital with the the most severe heart attack I've ever seen in my career. Um, he spent uh, three weeks at a hospital in Norfolk and he spent uh, three weeks down at Duke on a heart transplant list. Um, he did not end up get, getting the transplant and he did um, partly recover for a short time, uh, but he died about a year later. Heart just wow. blown up. Heart, I mean, the heart just blown up. So the troponin is a, a lab result. It's a cardiac uh, muscle damage uh, indicator and uh, it was the highest I've ever read in a medical record or seen in my career. It was over 4,000. What leads you, lead you to believe or what medical proof or has there been any validation that indeed it was the COVID vaccine that caused this? Well, um, I, I'm not real good with um, your pre your prior guest. I was watching him and he was like, share screen, share screen. And I'm not great with that because I'm new to this podcast world being as I've been a, a nurse, but uh, but any, I gave you that link and anybody can go to the FDA website and maybe you can post that link on your website, but page I seven. I didn't see the link. I didn't see the link. When did you send it to me? Uh, right about 30 minutes before um, we got oh, okay. on. Okay, I, I, I was on air. I, yeah, I, I yeah. went and looking. All right, I'll try to find, oh, well, here we go. Here's the link. Um, yeah, so in any case, they list on page 17 of their own meeting, October of 2020. It was the vaccine and related biological products meeting. They list on page 17. Yep, that's it. If you go to page 17 right there, you can see it says that there on the left hand side, almost to the bottom, acute myocardial infarction, and that is a heart attack. That's a fancy word for a heart attack. Uh, so all of these uh, that are listed there, this is their own working list from October of 2020, which was two months before rollouts on US soil. And I've seen patients with many of these things, definitely heart attacks. Um, I had a gentleman with pericarditis two weeks ago. Autoimmune disease has skyrocketed with these booster shots. Um, I had six cases of autoimmune hemolytic anemia in the past year uh, and in the prior five years before uh, zero, zero. So um, very unusual. I'm only one provider. Uh, and then the thrombocytopenia on the right hand, which is low platelets, all kinds of blood clotting problems, venous thromboembolism, that's a DVT in your leg, usually sometimes your arm, um, stroke, of course, um, the number of clots um, I would say uh, six times normal. So in a normal year, I might have three people with a blood clot, either their leg, their lung, or their brain, meaning a stroke. And then we're talking about uh, dozens, dozens upon dozens, all of them very close, usually uh, within a month. Um, I had um, a particular a woman who had a clot in her leg the very next day, she didn't know it, but she had pain in her leg. She tried to deal with it for two days and I saw her on day three and sure enough, she had a verified clot in her leg three days after her um, second shot. I lost your volume. I can't hear you. <laughs> Somehow muted myself, sorry, I've seen images of um, some of those six, eight, 10, 12 inch long clots. Is that, is that what, is that what you've seen? 
So I haven't personally had, but I believe one of those. Um, and actually he's pretty recent after a booster shot. Um, every single imaging test in the world couldn't confirm what was over six inches long in the back of his left leg. Um, usual imaging that easily diagnoses a clot couldn't it couldn't diagnose it. Uh, MRI couldn't diagnose it. He's currently um, undergoing a big workup, uh, but over six inches long in his left leg and over three inches long in his right leg. And this is a gentleman who's in, a real athlete. That gets, He's in, a runner. that gets in your arteries. You're in big trouble, right? Never, no health problems. He's a runner. He runs all the time. And yeah, so a lot of issues, but I've seen all those things that were listed on that page, sadly. Um, another really severe case, a middle-aged gentleman took the first vaccines because he was going to be fired from a local large company. Um, and uh, within 15 minutes in the monitoring room of him getting his injection, he felt awful. His blood pressure was over 200. Um, and they monitored him for about 30 minutes. I saw him twice after that within the next few weeks to uh, give him blood pressure medicine, change the doses, try to stabilize the blood pressure. I said, do not get another shot. This could have killed you right here. He got another shot because he said, who's going to support my family? I said, that doesn't matter if you're dead. And he got another shot. And um, he then had a crazy out of control blood sugar. Many diabetics have seen uh, uncontrolled blood sugar since having these shots. Um, I had a diabetic himself tell me to my face, I know that it happened. My blood sugar has always been excellently controlled and it went haywire right after the shot. And um, so he told me himself, um, that's some of that is also well documented in the literature. And by the way, myocarditis, the heart attacks, all anybody has to do is go to Google Scholar, type in the search bar. MRNA, for example, you could pick the word tinnitus for the ear ringing. You could pick myocarditis, MRNA, and any number of these um, of these uh, thrombosis. Thousands, all of these, not just one, not just combined, but I mean, just one subject, MRNA, and one of these diagnoses, and you'll see thousands of studies. Change the year to 2021, and just in two years, thousands of studies. So let's move on to the next one, which which is the obvious. So, you know, again, if we look at your book title here, it's it's um, vaccine injuries, lies and death. Let's talk about the lies. Um, and to me, the lies take two forms. Uh, they told us that the vaccine was safe and effective. Forget the effective part. Let's just focus on the safe part. And then when there were obvious harms that you saw and that the data was showing, like our Dr. Boston picked out, they tried to pretend that those cases didn't exist. Uh, when you mention lies in your book, uh, which which or both of those are you referring to? Um, I'm going to need you to repeat that since you want me to specifically. The lie about the vaccines being safe oh, or the safe lies about why oh. <laughs> people are dying and in the hospital? Well, <laughs> um, I think my entire book speaks to the lack of safety um, as well as does the FDA's own working list. Um, and uh, again, that's just well documented in the literature at this point. You know, was it Rasmussen that just did a poll that just did a poll of the American public where um, uh, a third of the American public believes that they know someone who's been harmed by the vaccines, you know? Um, and so the very nature of medical care has just changed. Um, you know, uh, there's so many people suffering uh, itises. <laughs> itis means inflammation, by the way. So anything that ends in, yeah, anything that ends in the word itis. Um, and um, I've had people's inflammatory markers double, triple, and quadruple. And of course, then they have a new health problem or they have terrible, terrible pain. People having pain flare ups from a back injury 40 years ago or uh, a knee injury, you know, 15 years ago, that's never bothered them until mysteriously in 2021. But the effective part is, is a complete, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not effective because, uh, for example, just yesterday I had a woman who yeah, had a we booster. All, we all know that. We all yeah, know that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What I do want to what I do want to ask you about is this medical charts, official diagnosis. Okay. You've seen it. The, the FDA lists all the possible side effects. People are sick. 
and, and harm, obviously, if you connect the dots. But are hospitals and doctors honest about this? Do they list the vaccine as a cause of these problems? Or is that just ignored? You've seen the charts. You've seen the final reports, probably. You've worked with the patients. Are, are they just burying this? Yeah, I read uh, medical records almost every day, uh, either emergency room or admission notes or discharge notes or death summaries. Um, and no, um, I have believed that in the past, probably, uh, I would say since the vaccines rolled out, I've seen two mentions, two mentions. So that's out of, you know, hundreds, uh, hundreds, of, uh, several hundred. Um, I have... Uh, coded them <laughs> myself um, because like the autoimmune hemolytic anemia is, is so very, very obvious. And there's some that are just so very, very obvious. Um, but uh, unfortunately, no. And, you know, you know, I mean, I do blame doctors and nurses. Um, people should have spoke up sooner. I don't care if your job is on the line or not. Uh, but, you know, many, of course, coerced by their corporation. They're coerced right. by their right. corporation. So they won't do it. They're told not to do it. Yeah. Not to do what? Not to uh, not to blame it on the vaccine or mention the vaccine. Wow. None of my patients were even asked the date of their vaccine. I'm the only person that asked them the date of their vaccine. Wow. They didn't even they didn't even want to know. That's correct. That's correct. Never mind report it. They didn't even want to know. That's correct, which really, I mean, you know, oh. of course, the FDA, the CDC doesn't care about its own rules. The rules are if you suspect a vaccine reaction, you have to report it. But if you don't ask, <laughs> you can't suspect it. And so really, it's a crime. It's just so many crimes. On top oh, it of one is on a crime. Of it, it's yeah. absolutely a crime. And, you know, I've been I've been critical of these pediatricians who yes. just blind. I mean, we know that kids don't need the, 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 the vaccine. We've we've always known that. One of the people we've had on here is, is a pediatrician who 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 understood the truth. But but you know, everyone would say, well, just go consult your doctor. But no, the, the doctors either turned a blind eye, stuck their head in the sand, sand or just believed yeah. everything the CDC or the Department of Health would tell them. Yeah, and you and mentioned you know, how the, medicine has changed. We we yeah. can't even trust doctors anymore, uh Deanna. I agree. <laughs> I grieve, I grieve the the profession, the loss of the profession totally too. But, you know, and then the lack of safety part, you know, the, the screen that you put, put up where you highlighted the heart attack, um, it also listed on their vaccine enhanced disease. And what vaccine enhanced disease is, that means that you're going to get sicker when you get exposed right there on the, the very last one on the right. Yep. Vaccine enhanced disease. And you can see the inflammatory syndrome and children, but really it's not just children, it's adults. It's been well established in the medical literature. Uh, so that means that if you get exposed to the uh, virus or the illness, that you're going to actually get sicker because it'll be enhanced. Your your disease will be enhanced uh, because of whatever it did to your immune system. And, you know, by the way, this is why all previous coronavirus vaccines have failed, meaning cold virus you know, common cold viruses. They've tried to make them, uh, I, I believe it's seven, six or seven times they've tried to make a common cold vaccine in the past. It's failed every time because in the trials, animals died when they were exposed to the original virus. So vaccine enhanced disease makes you sicker. There's no doubt that this shot affects your immune system. Um, it's well established already as well in the liver in the literature um, that um, it uh, that it gets into your liver right away, um, which affects your genes and people are getting sicker. Yeah. Um, as someone who wrote an article about your book said the COVID vaccine has caused more injuries than all other vaccines combined in the history of modern medicine. It seems now as if Pfizer and Moderna and the other, they knew it, they hit it, the government was complicit in it, the medical establishment, the doctors were complicit in it, the media has been complicit in it. It's a crime, like you said, you you used the word crime or criminal, it, it, it's an absolute crime against humanity. Yeah. Um, before we get into, you know, treatments and what you can do about it, how big a crime was this against humanity? I mean, how can you even put a, 
it, just massive worldwide escalation. By the way, I don't know, did nobody nobody notice that we didn't get any worldwide news? We hardly get any international news anymore. You know, Portugal, uh, gosh, in 2021 had this video. They, they made posters of all the young people who died after the shots and they had them all stuck in the grass at a park. And somebody went around with their camera looking at the posters of, of these young people with the dates of their shot and the date of their death, which was always very, very close together. Um, and, uh, you know, in Canada, in the UK, there's a building, all the whole front of the building is plastered with posters, you know. Um, so uh, I, I, I don't know why we why we believe our media anymore. You know, the media tells you this much of the story, but it's this big. It's not left versus right, red versus blue. It's like a story way over here. <laughs> so. All right, uh, let's get to the most important part. We only got two or three minutes left, but okay. your book title also says helpful resources for healing. Does, does yeah. that imply there's something that can be done if you've had a full regimen of these dangerous shots? Well, um, I definitely believe that there is things that can improve people's symptoms. I have seen that. Um, it doesn't mean that everybody is going to be fully cured. For example, transverse myelitis, when you have inflammation of the spine, if you become paralyzed, um, like the orthopedic surgeon that was on Fox News recently, um, Joel Walskog, um, you know, your life is going to be devastated. If you don't get really early treatment, there's only so much that can be done. But that there is a chapter in the book, uh, truthforhealth.org, which is Dr. Peter McCullough's group, um, flccc.net. Um, which has just a myriad of physicians in it now. And I know McCullough's group is growing as well. And prayerfully, you know, the public is going to demand freedom. They already are. I have new patients all the time coming to see me because their doctor, doctor lectured them for 10 minutes about masks and then didn't take care of the health problem they went to see them for or keeps harping on getting the vaccine. So um, more and more, I have had some success, um, various cases. Uh, another one is um, allergic vasculitis or allergic purpura, terribly itchy rash, uh, usually a childhood problem. I've had a half a dozen women with that. Um, and they're older women, so they, it, it's very unusual that you would see that, but they've responded well to treatment. Um, so there is a lot of things that can be done. Um, and so you just have to, it, it's probably a challenge. Or anything, I, is there, I, I know but, you'll, I, I know you'll explain in detail a lot of those cases in your book. So that's why we're going to, we're going to, we're going to promote your book one more time before we let you go. But let me ask this more generally. Is there anything I don't know if prophylactically is the right word. Is there anything more generally you can do to offset the negative impact of the vaccine, the spike proteins, the mRNA, all of that? Is there anything generally yeah. you can do across the board yeah. that if you have had two, three or four shots, you might do to, to lessen your chances of having a severe reaction? Right. Well, most of these um, adverse events are from high escalation of inflammation. So anything you can do to help out your immune system and reduce your inflammation. So boosting your, you know, your C and your D, of course, this is not medical advice, my friends, <laughs> but this, well, you know, uh, general knowledge, boosting your C and your D and um, your vitamins, uh, staying really well hydrated. Um, if you have any suspicion of clotting, you need to find a provider who can help you with that and talk about things like a baby aspirin or whatever else, other wow. things there are supplements and things, um, and reduce your inflammation. So less sugar, because sugar is very pro-inflammatory, less alcohol, very pro-inflammatory, smoking, you know, all of the offenses to our body, chemical exposure, uh, you know, anything that raises inflammation, you want to lower. There are a lot, a lot of supplements um, over the counter that lower inflammation. Turmeric is a good one, but there's dozens of them. So yeah, look Great around advice. in natural health yeah, resources and uh, providers like me. I do conventional medicine. Some drugs are wonderful and life-saving and other drugs I hate. I wouldn't give them to my cat who destroyed my couch because they make you dumb. You know, <laughs> you have to be very discriminatory, but um, yeah. Is vaccine injuries, lies, and deaths. The author is my guest, Deanna Klein. Deanna, uh, tell our audience where they can find your book. 
Thank you. Yes, just Amazon. It's on Amazon.com and you just search my name and put in the word vaccine or this whole book uh, title uh, and it should come right up. It's um, on the Kindle and then a paperback. Um, and I just wanted to say if I could real quick, I'm wearing my Virginia Medical Freedom. You can't see it. My Virginia Medical Freedom Group every state by now probably has the medical freedom group. And just like your last guest, I want to encourage everybody. I don't care if it's not medicine you, you want to get involved in, but you need to get involved with freedom. I don't care. Constitutional freedoms, free speech, gun rights, parent right, parental rights, you know, <laughs> medical freedom. A amen. Right? Amen to that. Deanna Klein. I think we might have to invite you back on this show again. Cause I, I, I like the way you think right there. I'm with you on all that. Uh, Deanna. Thank you so much for having me. And you even played ball with us by wearing a cap. So we, we yeah. doubly love you. Deanna yeah. Klein, thank you very much. We will have you back again soon. Good day. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. And okay. to you, our viewing audience, thanks for tuning in today on this Wuhan Wednesday. Uh, every Wednesday here on the In the Dugout Show on the Ocean State Current. So signing off for today is Mike Stenhouse. See you next game.